G'day, my name is Gunn Hudson. I'm creating this video for myself and my team in my business, but probably also going to put it on YouTube. So if you appreciate this, would love a comment. Um, other ways that you can appreciate this video is um, you can actually get Pabli Connect if you don't have it already with a lifetime subscription. I'll have the link underneath this video and that will send me a small affiliate link, a small affiliate commission if you do purchase it through that link, which is massively appreciated. All right, so I've created a working procedure. Um, you can find this page at the link below this video and you can share the entire page. You can duplicate this entire page into your own notion if you'd like it. Um, and then also in the testing example database, I've created a little test database here and you can find the example Pabli Connect automation with the link also um, in this database here. So on the right side of the screen, I've got the uh, testing Pabli workflow. And on the left, I'm just gonna talk through exactly what I'm doing. So what I've found is that Pabli um, to Notion um, is very powerful, but it was kind of confusing figuring out how to look up Notion pages and how to look up Notion database results and edit them. It was really easy. You know, There's plenty of videos showing you how to if you get a new contact or a new result in a form, then put the details into a database in Notion. Really easy to do that. But how do we look up an existing customer or an existing field and edit it? So maybe a customer you know, fills in a form or, or takes an upsell. How do we look up the original purchase and edit that? Um, and so that was kind of really difficult to figure out. And so I put together this for my team so that I can explain it to them in one video, but also I couldn't find the result on the internet. So uh, here it is for you too. All right, so on the right, I've basically set up a trigger of a webhook. Now this webhook, you know, this URL will be different for you. This is the one for the one in mine. And you can just fire off this trigger by copying it and just pasting it into a web browser. And then at the end, put question mark. And so this will add a field to the end of the webhook. And you can call the field name and then equals, and you can write anything you like there. So I've just write for it, yes. And that will fire off the um, trigger. So you can test it. And the response will say, whatever you've shot. So I'll just shoot that again. Cool, so now I've got name equals yes, so that works. So now we've got a working trigger. And now we want, whenever that trigger is fired, whenever someone shoots that URL, we want um, Notion to look up a database and to edit something. So I've got an example database here. And what I found is that it was really helpful to f play, create a test database that is not full of all of your data in um, like the in the business, like the important data and to play around with the automation with the test database, just to see how it works and get your head around it. So I've created um, this database and there's one entry that says, find this one for Pabli and one that says, don't find this one for Pabli. And then we're gonna change this back to no and then untick the box and then just delete this text. And then all the other fields, the number three, one, two, we're gonna add the three in there as well. Status, I'm gonna link myself in here. Put in a few fields to like test all the other information and last edited and who was last edited by and everything like that. So it's really helpful to just create one of each of the types of fields so that we can see how they interact with Pabli and we shoot off the automation. All right, so next we want to create an action and we want to use the Notion app and we want to query a database. And I found this seems to be the most exact because instead of searching all of Notion, we're just going to search the results in this one database, um, which is much more precise and we don't accidentally get the wrong results. So uh, we're going to get Pabli uh, database, which is the one that I've shared with them. Now there's plenty of videos. If you haven't figured out how to hook up your Notion, I'll leave that, you know, just search that on YouTube. There's other videos showing you how to do that. And then these are the filter conditions. So this is where it gets a bit complicated. Now you can read over here the filter, you can link to the, this is the Notion um, page that tells you how to write these filters. Or you can use an example one that I have managed to figure out, like the most simple one. 
Now I'm not a coder. So looking at this page scares the crap out of me. I'm like, oh my God, all this code, this is confusing. I have no idea what all this means. But just by kind of like reading it simply, you can kind of figure out um, very, you know, very simple ones just from watching this video and just like testing things out, you can kind of figure it out. So what this one does is it gets the property name. So the property is name here with a capital M and it's a text property. So that needs to be put in and then equals find this one for Pabli. So now if you read the documentation on the right here, you can see down under compound filter object that uh, further down, way further down, down here, under all the different types of things you can say. So equals means that it matches it exactly. So equals would not find the one that says don't find this one for Pabli because it, it has to be exactly the same. And that says don't. And so that one wouldn't find it. But if you changed it to contains, it would, it would turn up both because they both contain find this one for Pabli, right? So getting your head around all of these different types, like equals, does not equal, contains, does not contain, starts with, ends with, is empty, is not empty. And then all the different types of fields have different, uh, if it's a number field, you can, you know, you can have uh, mathematical things like less than, equals, greater than. Um, if it's a date, you can put equals, before, after, on or before. Um, is empty past year, past week. So all of the filters that you can do in Notion, you can basically write into a formula. So if you can, if you turn on a filter, I would start out actually creating a filter. So filter by name, where the name equals, so it is, uh, find this one for Pabli. And that should find the one that you're after. And so, you can use a filter in, in the database to make sure that that's gonna find the one the only one. If it finds two or more, then it means your filters are maybe not great. And if it does find two or more, you can also sort. So maybe if it finds, so for example, if mine was contains, then it's found two. So maybe I could add a sort or maybe I could add a complex filter so I could change it to an advanced filter and say where my name does not contain don't okay so i don't know why that still brings that one up because it should and where name does not contain don't that really should not find that one so that actually confuses me a lot where the name contains this and the name does not contain don't. Does it need these things? No, it does not. Maybe I'll just put the don't. Okay, for some reason the 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 um the apostrophe messes it up. So okay, so that's important to know. So just the word don't, does not contain don't. So that will work too. So that's why testing the filter in Notion first is really smart um, to check that your filter finds the exact one that you're after before you try to write in, into a formula because you'll find weird things like exactly what I just found there live. So that's really, really helpful. Cool, so is, there we go. All right, so once you've tested your filter, you want to basically write it into the Pabli connect. So property name text equals find this one for Pabli. Sort by name ascending. So that's okay because we don't really we're not really using that. We've found only one. But maybe if you find a bunch, you could sort via the edited date. So maybe you want the one that was edited last or the one that was created last. Maybe it was just created in a previous step in the Pabli automation. So that will obviously be the next edited one. And then you wanna hit save and send test request and just check that the one that you were meant to find came up as result zero. So you'll see how many results it picks up by scrolling down. This time it only says result zero. So that's only one. Sometimes I've found like up to 25 results, which means my filters weren't good enough. 
So um, you want it to only basically find the one, at least, at least one, or you want the one that you're after to be the top one, which is result zero. So it, found, it means that you found lots, but you sorted it in the correct order, and the one that you're after was at the top. So I'm going to turn that filter off. Cool. So now you can go down here and you can see how all the information shows up. So we've got the image. That's the file name. We've got where the image actually is hosted on Notion servers. So we can find that um, over here. There we go. That's the image that I uploaded, just my display picture. Um, that's an add-on, by the way. What I just used is called, because uh, I know people will ask me this, it's called, I forget what it's called. Uh, I think it's called Boomerang or something like that. No, I'll just find it. It's called Rectangle. Uh, this is a really sweet add-on. That's how I've got my two pages perfectly half and half. Rectangle, thank you, June, for sharing that with me on Instagram. That was a great tip. <laughs> um, so coming down here, the uh is heaps of you know you can see what it says so text auto added so i'm going to delete that one that's what my automation has been editing we're going to put this in as one two three and there we go cool so now we have confirmed that our search step has found the correct the correct entry so now i'm going to edit that entry so we're just going to make myself smaller There we go, cool. So after finding the right step, uh, we wanna select update page as the action item. And so we wanna update the page and then we want the page ID and you wanna be able to basically grab it from the Notion query and it's gonna be this, this one here, result zero ID. That's the one that you want. So it's basically gonna be the ID of the result zero that you found in the previous search step. And then you want to edit the, um, put in what you want to edit. Now there's just a few things that you probably want to realize that I've just discovered. So the multi-select, you can't just like add, like we couldn't just change this to say, if this said one and two, and we put in here three, it wouldn't add three to that. It would take away one and two and only leave it as three. So um, as you can see now I've started off with one, two, three, because we haven't got three here, it's gonna leave it as one and two. Um, it doesn't seem, Pabli doesn't seem to, I can't figure out, Pabli works with status. I can't figure out how to change statuses from this to done. Uh, I've tried true, I've tried one, uh, I've tried done. So uh, I guess it doesn't, uh, I guess it doesn't. Yeah. So I guess it's a new feature at the state uh, or start of August to 2022. So maybe they'll update that in a future thing. Um, and then you can just basically play around. Now, important to know checkboxes need to be true if you want them to be checked and false if you want them to be unchecked. Um, and then uh, dates are put in in this format. So year, 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 month, month, day, day, and then the letter T and then the hour and then the minute and then the second and then like the point seconds, but we don't use them and then the time zone. So this one at the moment is uh, August 3rd, 2020, 1 a.m. in the time zone, Sydney, Australia, which is plus 10 hours. And, or if you don't want the time, you can just do the date, which is, there should be another Y in there. Four, year, 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 month, month, day, day. And so you can put in the start date and the end date if you want. Otherwise, the start date is enough. And so now we're going to hit save and test requirements and we're going to see it fire. So we should see this basically update. So, yep, it found the right one. It changed it to yes. It ticked the box and it ordered it, added this text in here and it got rid of the three. And so that's a success and it didn't mess up any of the other data that was in here. As we can see, it all stayed in there. And you can now see that it was last edited by Pabli Connect, which is really helpful to see that. Awesome, so that's all a success. You can also come down here on the right and just see what it edited. Um, and you can just kind of like play with things and figure out. Um, 
like, uh, you know, like what it's been doing and whatnot. So I highly recommend once you're done, if you can just change this back to no, so the next person editing it um, can play with it nicely. Uh, and add this one back to three. And yeah, hope hope this was super helpful. Um, I'm gonna add more to this working procedure in the future, but uh, yeah, this like helped me out a lot. Now I'm going to automate so many things in my business. I've actually got a journal and I'm gonna automate automatically my aura ring. Uh, I'm gonna, so there'll probably be another video at some point um, because I'm in the process of getting automatically my sleep, putting it into my daily journal, putting in my water. When I've drunk my water, I wanna tell Siri, hey Siri, log water. I want to log my meditation automatically when I close my meditation app. Um, I'm going to log uh, what else? My sleep time, my wake up time. Uh, when I, yeah, just a bunch of things into like my daily journal. And I was trying to figure out how to automatically find the entry for my daily journal and put in the right entry on the right date. And it was a total pain in the ass. Um, if that sounds super interesting to you and you would like love that information, just comment below the video. Cause that means I probably haven't, I probably won't make those videos until people tell me like, yes, please would love that video. And, uh, yeah, obviously this has heaps of use cases in business apart from just messing around with my daily <laughs> journal. Uh, this is going to be really helpful to look up customers and edit their files and things like that. Awesome. Uh, just once again, if this was really valuable and you're thinking about buying Public Connect, I bought it. I thought it was great. Um, the lifetime deal was 500 bucks uh, for the uh, forever. Instead of paying, I used to pay Zapier $50 a month. So after one year, um, I'll have Pebbly for the rest. So I won't, won't be paying that. I hate paying subscriptions and Zapier was one of my highest subscriptions. So uh, yeah, that was a nice deal. You can grab that up here. And as I mentioned, I'll get a small kickback from that. So that's the best way you can support me creating these videos. Cause if someone does that, or if lots of people do that, I'll definitely make way more of these. Cause I freaking love, um, automating things. And this in itself would be an epic business, just buying a lifetime subscription. As you can see, I've got 30,000 tasks remaining and I've only used 20 um this month and that'll reset every month so uh yeah that's pretty crazy like i could i could create automations for 10 or 20 businesses and charge them 50 100 bucks a month and you know that my time of setting up all the automations because once you create the automation once you can duplicate it into someone else's business way easier so watching this video understanding what i just taught you in the video and then buying a lifetime subscription and then practicing this skill set of connecting notion and other things you could just become an entire notion consultant freelancer doing this for businesses um, if anybody gets really good at that and wants to hit me up i will probably hire you in my business because i want to automate so many things it was very time consuming creating the automations um, yeah so i hope all of that was helpful thank you and speak soon